Acustats Video Productions presents from Louisville, Kentucky, the first annual Derby City Classic. Along with Danny DiLiberto, I'm Bill N. Cardona here at the Executive West Hotel, where we're having a pool extravaganza. Yes, we are. One pocket, bank pool, and nine ball. Well, we have a great match in store for us tonight, Danny. Shannon Dalton, without a doubt, the strongest young player in the world today. His opponent, 1998 Player of the Year, number one rating, ranking, I should say, Camel Pro Billiard Series Player of the Year, Francisco Bustamante. And tell us a little bit about Francisco Bustamante, Danny. Well, he is, at the very moment, the best nine ball player in the world. I mean, he is confident. He's doing anything he wants to do. I mean, he was playing a, a young lion today earlier, and the guy had him 3 nothing playing perfect. And he got up like he was the one winning and just flew right by him and, and beat him like 7-3 to three or something like that. I mean, he is playing as well as anyone I've ever seen play, you know. And, and there was a time when I thought Lassiter was the best nine ball player I ever saw. This guy here, I don't see how you could play any better than he's playing right now. And we're playing on tight pockets. You know, all those years that I played around Lassiter, we never had real tight pockets. And Lassiter won all the nine ball tournaments. But this guy's doing it on tight pocket tables. The ball's a little off the rail and he slams it in. I mean, you know, he is very impressive right now. The tournament is sponsored by... Diamond Products, and also Simona's 860 cloth. If you're not playing on Simona's, you're just not playing. Anyways, wh what is it with the Philippine players, Danny? I mean, fr uh, Francisco oh, wow. Bustamante, Efren Reyes, Jose Perica, and it goes on and on and on. Leonardo Andam. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, let me tell you something. Uh, the last time I tried to explain it, I was kidding, and uh, let me tell you just what happened. This kid that plays on the Florida Tour came up to me. His name's Hunter Lombardo. He said the same thing. Why do the uh, Filipinos play so good? I said, did you ever notice none of them wear glasses? And I said, they eat worms. Worms are good for your eyes. And I forgot to tell him I was kidding. And about three weeks later at another <laughs> tournament, he said he tried the worms. <laughs> Well, you didn't tell him that you were kidding after he told you that. No, no, I, mean, I mean, you, you. No, what I did say was, <laughs> did it help? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to go on with it. I watched Bustamante play C.J. Wiley in Chicago at one of the Willard's tournaments, the Willard events in Chicago, and he gave C.J. Wiley the eight and nine. I'm going back about, I must have been five, six years ago, if my memory serves me correct. And, well, that man played about as good as nine balls you can possibly play. That was back five, six years ago. And now we're going to have an opportunity to see him play right now against, once again, well, the strongest how, young player in the world today how old is in Shannon? Shannon Dalton. How old is he right now? I, I'd, I'd say Shannon's about 25, 26 years 25, old. 25, 26. You know, I can't remember when he wasn't around. Well, Shannon, you know, Shannon's been around ever since he was been 11 years old. Yeah, that's a long you know? time being involved. I mean, he's probably, without a doubt, I mean, this, this is in, he's the indisputable uh, best young, experienced player in the world today. Right. I mean, there's no one that has more experience than and, Shannon Dalton. And uh, how about his, his, his uh, money heart? He can play for money, too. Oh, absolutely. He's won a lot you know, of money. That's like pool. a big test when a, a guy can pool. hold up for uh, big money. And, the, and, and his opponent, Francisco Bustamante, well, he's just a killer playing for money. Remember the tournament in Dayton, Ohio, when Johnny Archer ran 13 yeah. racks on Bustamante right. for 5000 yeah. And Bustamante said, you want to bet 10 Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And the next set, Bustamante beat him. Here we go. Okay. What a break. The first break. He made a one ball. But anyway, folks, we could talk about gambling and all that because in this particular arena, there's a sign that says, no, no gambling. So this thing was like uh, they're, they're trying to stimulate it and make you gamble. And they are. Yeah, well, I think that gambling adds a little bit of luster to a tournament, something that we've been lacking. And, and I'm very candid about that. You know, I mean, I, 
that's just the way I feel about it. Well, especially this particular event. People come in here, pay their money to watch it, the tournament, and some of them want to see more pool, and they can. Someone's playing every night for thousands. Well, anyway, he made the one don't have a shot on the two. Is he going to shoot or play safe here, Billy? Well, it appears that he's shooting here. Yeah, it appears that he's not missing either. <laughs> so, you know. That I, was like nothing to him. Yeah, I'd be very hard-pressed to uh, to attempt a shot like that. It's, you know, it's a very low percentage shot, at least, uh, you know, from, from my standards. It's a low percentage shot. Well, I played him one time, and it was at, in Fort Lauderdale, one of the tour stops, and he made balls from everywhere shots like that and everything i said look at this guy he must think i can't play he's freewheeling and then i see him do it to everyone else and also the filipino players are really uh i think above the american players in the safety area and also the kicking area of the game because they play a lot of rotation you know they're it, yeah it just uh yeah, you don't have as much space to move the cue ball around from ball to ball. So, you know, when they come here and play nine ball after playing rotation, it's like uh, the American players playing six ball suddenly. You know, you get a shot in nine ball, you say, ah, nothing in the way. You well, know. that's a pretty good analogy, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good comparison. Dalton steps to the table once again. You know, Dalton is a great money player, has a lot of heart, and has a ton of ability. And let's see how good he kicks. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. He's a very, very experienced player and totally understands <coughs> the banking game, kicking, yep. great shot maker. Actually, he elevates as well as anyone in the world. And we'll, we'll have a, probably have a chance to watch him elevate in this match, and I'll bring it up when he does elevate. Whenever he elevates, he really doesn't lose much accuracy. It's uncanny. Now, the three ball can be banked cross side, but it looks like he's got rather of an awkward angle on it, so he's going to have to cross it. I don't know if the four will pass the five in the lower right-hand corner, so therefore, he's got a lot of work ahead of him in this rack, Danny. He played the six ball on a billiard. He wasn't able to put it down. Dalton steps to the table with really the first legitimate opportunity in game number one. Well, if the four don't pass that five, he's still got a lot of work to do here because he would have to be somewhere where the nine ball is right now if he plays the four in the pocket where he's standing. But at any rate, we jump ahead because we know their ability. I mean, we're already giving him the three and the six. And we're figuring out how he's going to get on to four. And another problem that he was confronted with, which probably went unnoticed, is the position of the cue ball in relation to the three and the ball with the six ball he just pocketed. He wasn't able to reposition the cue ball on the bottom cushion, which would then in turn give him a better angle to play from the three to the four. Now he has to do a lot more work from, from the three to the four. Okay, you see what he's doing here? He didn't execute too well, but it's so big to play both hands. Uh, he reached that shot right-handed. You know, he's a left-handed player. Uh, you know, all the people I teach, you know, especially the be very beginners, I tell them to practice both hands it is such an advantage. And the Filipinos, that's another advantage they have. They switch hit so well. They do, uh, with the exception of the player who is playing in this feature match, Bustamante. If he has to go opposite hand, he just as soon play behind his back. Pop that in. Yeah, that was a great shot. Shannon Dalton yeah. just played a bank pool match with Nick Varner prior to this match right here. Uh -huh. Nick Varner won the bank pool tournament, as you know. And what a performance he showed us, uh, us during that uh, particular match. We have that in, in the Accustats. You can buy it, yes. Yeah, we can buy it. Great tape. That tape. Got to get that tape. Great exhibition by Nick Varner in that particular match. Shannon Dalton at the table. This is game number one. Yeah, they had a lot of sparring in this one. We 
saw Bustamante break the balls in game number one. Bustamante regarded as possibly the best breaker in the, in the world today. Shannon Dalton also breaks the balls extremely well. We'll have an opportunity to watch him break game number two. Yeah. One game to nothing, but race to seven, short race to seven. Very important, jump out of the gate fast. The first game goes to Dalton. This reminds me of an a, a Old West uh, gunfight, you know what I mean? And, and uh, Dalton would be like Billy the Kid, and Bustamante would be Johnny Ringo, right? If you had to throw names on them like that. <laughs> I think yeah. that's, that's uh, fairly appropriate. Yeah. Dalton checking the rack, making sure there are no air holes in the rack. He wants to make sure all the balls are tightly racked, giving him better action off of his break. And Billy the Kid was left-handed, just like Dalton. Here we go, game number two. Dalton at the table, preparation, and opening up the balls. Watch the cue ball. Should be uh, stopped somewhere in the center of the table if he hits it well. Something like that. Oh, what a break. Very good break. Oh, a lot of a power break. and excellent control of the cue ball. Unfortunately, it looks like the four ball has yeah. come in between the two and the cue ball. He broke them really magnificently. I love it. But I love it. wasn't able to come up with the shot. I'm going to tell you something. I, you know, I thought that happened to me only. You know, they talk about the break all the time. How much better could you break them? And the last ball rolling snookers them. Mm -hmm. The last ball rolling. That happens more. It's maddening. Yeah, that happens more often than it should. But I hate it. Yeah, particularly when it. you're breaking them as well as he's broken them. What yeah. an injustice what it is. Yeah. Amazing. The last ball rolling snook at him. And he's got a better temperament than I do because that's the one thing about pool I can't take. That break stuff and <laughs> the ball's rolling funny and all that. I can't handle that. No, th th this is a shot that you really can't accept. I mean, how can you accept this shot? There's really very, uh, well, not much of a future in, in going offensively here. He's looking at any tricks first. He's saying, well, the guy shot here, is he just bluffing? Is this like a poker hand here? Is he bluffing? Or does he have some kind of move? And let me see if there is indeed a move. And he decided there isn't. I myself am kind of curious what kind of a move is out there, what he has in mind. From the position he's left himself in here, doesn't seem like to me there's much available. You can't shoot it because if you happen to make it in that corner pocket, you're snooking yourself on the three. Uh, he's got to try to play some kind. I think he's got to try to roll the, the two behind the eight. That seems to be the only uh, viable yeah. option. All right, that's what it he looks has. like. That's what he's trying That's to do. That's what he's trying to do. And he's falling a little short, but of course there wasn't much margin for error on that very, shot. Yeah, very tough. If you if you you know take the liberty to stroke it too hard, you might sell it out to the side, and at this level of play, you are done. I don't believe Bustamante has the angle on the two to stop the cue ball and hook him behind the eight. I, I think the eight's in the, in the way there. But he can very softly finesse it. And let's see here. No, he didn't finesse it. He two railed it, left the edge. He tried to two rail the two underneath the three, four, and the nine, the yeah. three balls that are kind of like to the right of the foot spot. And you see, ordinarily, the tables we play on, like in the back room or in pool rooms, that ball would have banked a little sharper. This is new cloth, and it just came off that rail uh, a little longer. He might have a free shot if he wants to shoot it. He that's, did. Yeah, well, that's very observant of me, Danny. Yeah. He did have a free shot. Notice yeah. he used, he utilized the three and the four as blockers there. You know what I found out over the years? It's only a free shot when you make the ball. When you hit it bad, it flies all around. You sell out, and everybody says, look at this jerk. Well, I don't think so. Yeah. That's not totally I, true. I find that out. When you hit it bad, it isn't a free shot anymore. Well, you're not supposed to hit it bad. Well, I guess that's the way he feels. Oh, almost uh near a miss, but he was able to put it down. Well, anyway, I was just trying to give him credit for the bank because that was an excellent shot. And, and Shannon Dalton, an excellent banker, can afford to hit that shot with the speed that he hit it with because he knows he's going to hit close to the pocket and he's going to kill the action of the ball or make it. Well, he was born and raised in that bank pool state, Kentucky. And he said, hey, what's this? What's the He's oh all right. boy. A little closer than he wanted, yeah, but uh, nevertheless, he's still at the table. His steak horse just twitched in the first row there. Yeah, 
he, he, it looks like he's going to cross table on this shot. And uh, if when you opt to do that, you have to make sure that you hit the ball, that you're shooting very cleanly, right. shooting into a four-inch pocket, particularly with the angle that he had on that particular shot. Well, he had to hit it clean. He got perfect. A little rough there. Mm. Hit a little roughly, but nevertheless, it went down. Game number two, Dalton at the table, looking to make it two to nothing. Well, this table might be the softest table in, in the whole tournament because it's under these bright lights and it stays warmer and drier. So I would imagine that uh, you, know, you can hit the... Plus, it's not as used as the, as the rest of them. Now, when two upper echelon players play... Nine ball is a game of momentum because both players are top players and when one player has the momentum, he sees what he can do with it. And then all of a sudden the momentum will then switch. Then the other player will start getting the momentum and then he sees what he can do with it. Right now, the momentum is in Dalton's favor. Well, I'll tell you else. You know, when I'm playing a match like this and it's a short match, I start figuring this out. Dalton's got three now? I believe he's got two to nothing. Two, that's the second game? Two nothing. Okay, here's what I start figuring out now. The guy has to beat him seven to four from here. Yeah. Well. So mentally, it could like give it a shot in the arm. Then not that he needs it, but I'm just telling you one of my methods. I keep track of the score, and I know what the guy's got to play me eight to two or something, and it loosens your wrist up a little. But nine ball, I don't think you should even look at the score because nine ball is not a game you're supposed to look at the score. Because each game has as much value as the next, regardless of the score. What a break. Once again, pocketing two balls on the break. Cue ball near the center of the table. Does have a shot on the one. He does. And he's he over the top. You're talking about the jack up? Here it yeah. comes. Well, he's not going to lose much accuracy just because he has to elevate. Yeah. This is the shot that he hit so accurately, and he's really gotten paid off for it in yeah. dividends throughout his little throughout his short career, I should say, See, if you folks, will. See, the three ball won't let him have just a level uh, bridge, you know, and stroke. So, therefore, uh, he has to elevate it a little bit because of the three. And whenever you see a player at the table having to elevate... Well, not much here. He looks like... Okay, he's, he's able to shoot, a, shoot to the side of the three. Right, he's okay. Big difference. Big difference, Ellen. He ran into the six and made it just a little tougher. I was going to I was going to mention that whenever you see a player elevate, the accuracy of that particular shot is diminished somewhat. Not so much with Shannon Dalton because of his ability. He's developed the skills to elevate yeah. and hit hit balls with with accuracy. Well, the reason for that, when you elevate the cue, it uh, the the cue ball will jump a little. You know, when you shoot down into the uh, cue ball into the cloth it will hop a little in fact that's really how uh, you jump over balls anyway shooting down on the cue ball look at this hit excellent shot yeah. look at this hit he feels good right now don't he no he yes he certainly does Danny. he has the angle here where he'll probably hit it with a little bit of inside English right. after hitting the second cushion it'll go straight up the table somewhere by the foot spot area and passing that naturally for position for the six in that lower right-hand uh, corner. I think after the second ray, he'll be aiming at the seven, sort of. See it? Hope the seven. He hit the seven. I said he's aiming for the seven. He hit it. Right. That's the line it figured to go with that little reverse. He got perfect. I mean, you know, he's got the angle on the six to get the angle on the seven to get to the eight. You know, that's how Siegel, uh, Mike Siegel instructs this game threes you got the angle on the six to get the angle on the seven to get to the eight he's uh, gone he up table straight. yeah a little further than he wanted but i think that he'll fare best if he just pockets the seven and drifts forward maybe four or five inches and accepts the kind of like touchy shot on the eight if he yeah. tries to do something extra with the cue ball he may find himself in trouble here well being left-handed he just walked over there and saw how his reach is going to be. That's pretty, that's pretty experienced for a young man. He went over there to see if he's going to be able to reach the cue ball in that spot, being left-handed. Right-handed is no problem. But he has enough wisdom about him to check that out first. That is one of the things you're talking about for a young man. Yeah, exactly. Very meticulous for a young player. Game number three goes to Shannon Dalton, as the first two games did, 
and now he leads in a match three games to nothing in a very short race to seven. Now we're going to go back to uh, the last rack when Shannon broke the balls. He gets uh, so much action and he hits the one ball squarely. Well, let's take a look at the last break. Yeah, we want to check his uh, body movement on this. That's why we have this shot. Look how he went. <laughs> he has some body English. That is funny. You know, he not only breaks him good, he's the funniest breaker. Well, that that was something. It looked like a little uncoordinated with, uh, with that move, but body, body oh movement there God. after the break. What was that? You know what we ought to do? <laughs> Pat Fleming, you know what we ought to do? We ought to get all the different breaks and maybe put it to music. <laughs> You know, you might be able to come up with some, right? That's really a, that's that would an, be an, funny. an ingenious Just, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Wow, what a, what a break. Look at that cue ball. Look at the action he got from that break. Three oh, ball on the side. Ball. Once again, the last ball rolling got, got him again. Yeah, see, this is too much for me because I don't make balls on the break often. When this happens, I go berserk. That's a total injustice. I, I mean, you, ca you can't possibly oh. break the balls any better than what he just did. You can't. And, and he, uh, and he got without the six, it. he would have been perfect. The rack was over. I mean, you know, the one to the two to the four to the five, they're all like a, what we call a road map, you know. Okay, he's going to push out for a jump shot right here. Yeah. And with his uncanny ability, like I mentioned before, to elevate and hit balls accurately, he's going to force Bustamante to either kick or let Shannon shoot this shot. Right. Now, if Bustamante passes this shot, Shannon may just, just in fact possibly jump over the entire six ball and pocket this one ball, yeah. even though it's highly risky. Well, you know this by experience when you went to play uh, uh, Strickland years ago with Mike Siegel. Right? See, uh, Strickland was a young man. He would push out for the jump over the top. Siegel couldn't shoot it, and Earl never missed it. Right. That's such an advantage. And that's what the case is here. It's such an advantage to develop all the skills that you need to play nine ball, and jumping over balls is one of those skills that you really need to develop. Yeah. The only thing about this one is when the ball is sitting like that, so close to the rail, it's very easy to go right over it and onto the floor. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. This is a very... Very yes, it difficult is. position it that he's left himself in when Bustamante passes, which which he invariably passed. he passed. See? He would pass. Now Shannon yeah. will have two options here. He can either jump over the six, which is really risky because of what Danny said, yeah. the ball jumping off the table. Or he can kick possibly two cushions underneath the one or just one cushion and cross the one. So therefore he has three options available to him. Well, Let's see which one he chooses. The two cushion one, I don't really see how he can get the best of that. I, mean, I don't know what could possibly happen well, good. A, a lot of good things could well, happen. The cue ball can stay see, down the table. That's what he's doing. See, a lot of good things can happen. Yeah, there. he made it. Well, yeah. you know what? He's really ill fated here. I mean with Ill two out of, yeah, two out of the four breaks, yeah. he broke them absolutely perfectly. This. And that kick he, he, yeah, that kick and was wait, just a I have to say this perfectly ex executed kick. Go ahead. I call this field goal position. When you're between two but look at this. You got field goal position there. That's like uh, give me the game. I mean, you know the whole thing there. Uh, if the ball fell, Shannon had a tough shot on the two ball in tough position too. So, but meanwhile, if it stays, the guy has a Mickey Mouse out. If it falls, you have uh, a tough out. Well, so far in this match, the balls have certainly been in cooperating if, if for any one of the two players, both to Monte. But uh, you know as well as anyone, the balls will not stay loyal to any player. They have a way of turning around. They get, they get fickle. That's the word, fickle. But Bustamante desperately needed this opening right here. He trails in this match three to nothing. A race to seven is really short. And three to nothing is a very difficult lead to surmount in a race to seven. That's exactly the score he was losing in that match today with a young uh, a player from Florida named Braymore. Had him 3 nothing, and he hardly shot again. And that, you know, with this man, the way he breaks him, it's very possible uh, that he can run the, the set out. Well, I can't possibly even, even envision him breaking the balls any better than Shannon. Even though he has the reputation that he's the best breaker in the world. Shannon has been really hitting him 
and he, controlling the cue ball. But Bustamani knows, knows how to not let that last ball rolling snooker him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Look at that pose. Yeah, pose. You take yeah. that shot, put it on the film with the break, and come with some ballet or something. Game number four goes to Bustamante, who now gets on the board, trailing Dalton by two games, three games to one. Then we'll have another opportunity to watch Bustamante break the balls in game number five. Bustamante breaks him with the, with as much or more velocity than Dalton, but I don't think he can controls the cue ball as well as Dalton. But you know, he, he just he just gets so many more opportunities from his break because of his ability to open him up and the action that he gets off of his break. I was just going to go into that. If Dalton breaks him just as well or better, and he banks better, and he shoots uh, straighter maybe, well, just Whoa, what is it look that, at this. Yeah, he stopped That's it dead. There. Look at this. I was wrong. See, he gets snookered too. Well, anyway, that's another thing frustrates me about the game of nine ball. The game that is the most important game right now in pool, right? All big uh, awards and stuff go to the top nine ball player. Uh, the very most important shot in the game is a luck shot to me. You whack them hard. You hope you make a ball, and you hope you got a shot on the one. That's a lot of hoping for, you know, for a, a highly skilled game like this. But, however, that's how it is. Well, let's play a little bit of devil's advocate here, okay? The, the break is, is the most important shot in the game, but there is, there is less luck than you make it out to be. If the player breaks the balls with the, with the most velocity and he controls the cue ball the best, he will invariably get the most opportunities. Yeah, in the long run. Yeah, that's right, and that's the way we have to look okay. at it. He overcut the room, right? He tro throws his hand up in the air. It looked to me that's all he could hit. It looked like he hit just about as much of the one as he could have, and it was too thin. So in in three cushion, you call that shooting a stiff, right? But he did hit it well. Dalton wanted to end up a little further down the table. He's got a little angle off, angle shot here on the two. And it looks like he's going to have to go two cushions inside the eight. And then... Uh, it's that same shot yeah, that he shot a little while ago. Is. That same target like that when he was going at the seven, two rails. Got to put a center ball, a little bit of reverse English, and stroke it. Now, speed is very crucial is. on this yeah. shot. The speed of this shot is very crucial, <laughs> especially when you consider the position of the four. Yeah, well, how you like the speed? Well, the speed's a little off because uh, the, uh, the presence of the seven. It's a possible interfering ball. And he doesn't want to find himself in back of the seven. He's got a little bit of an off no, angle. No, if he can hit the seven one rail, he'll have the perfect angle on the four to get to the five. But this, he's not. He's going to wind up a little straight, isn't he? Yes, but, you know, but uh, what are you going to do? Had a very difficult shot. I thought he executed okay. it pretty he's good. He's looking for the five to go by the eight. If it don't go by there, that looks like the only spot on the table he can get off the four is in that path he was looking at the five getting past the eight. And he's going to take a walk, a walk around the table to find out where he needs to get once yeah. again, very meticulously taking a walk around the table, to find out exactly where he needs to get to have a shot on the five. Right. And that's something that a lot of players don't do as often as they should, Danny. Well, most of the beginners, they are, uh, you know, when you first started, you try to make that ball. Then you saw where it was, and you try to make the next ball. But, of course, professionals don't do that. And, and, and when you're improving out there, that is what will be the factor. You will suddenly start thinking about the next ball, and then as you go on, you'll be thinking of an angle on the next ball for you to get to the next ball. You know, that's really advanced. But so right now, most of you are just trying to make the ball. So more or less you program yourself to be consistent and intelligent at the table. Right. That's what endures anyway. You know that someday Dalton isn't going to uh, fire balls in from the end rail, not so he has to get the finesse and, and the knowledge while he's young. And I think that will be then a similar position to the ones that you and I are in at this time. 
we can't fire those balls in from the end rail. Yeah, so therefore, right. we have to rely on experience and playing the game the right way. I, I really have trouble admitting that, but I'm afraid you're right. At times, though, at times I still feel like I can make anything, but basically you are right. After you see these guys fire them in all the time. To me, it's like a big feat when I do one. They just Excellent. get up and do it. Look Beautifully at Beautifully executed stroke. Dalton possesses one of the strongest strokes in the game. No Effortless question about too. that. Effortless. Doesn't like the angle that he's left himself in with the eight right here. Shook his head a little bit in signs of disgust. But nevertheless, he has to deal with it. And I still think it'll turn out, it'll turn out fine. Straight back, he'll draw it for position for the side. I don't think he could have done it any better than that. Not with ball in hand. Pretty good shot right there with both direction and speed. Game number five, it looks like it's going to go to Dalton. And it does. He takes a four to one lead in a race to seven. Now let's take a look at Bustamante's break. I mean, this is why he's regarded as the best breaker in the world today. Again, we're watching his body movement. He didn't have, a, oh, he don't look as uh, funny as uh, Dalton. Dalton's much more entertaining. We got to see Dalton do that again. Actually, I misquoted that. That wasn't the reason why he was regarded as the most effective breaker in the world today. We didn't see the balls. We didn't see the action of the balls. We just seen his, if you want to see body movement, look at uh, Johnny Archer break the balls and Tony Allen. Or, or Strickland. And Strickland. I yeah. mean, they just, uh, the, you know. They put it all, like Archer puts everything into the break. Yeah. He only weighs like 130 pounds, doesn't he? <laughs> he weighs more. He's tall, kid. He weighs more than 130? Sure. He's tall. Gee, Archer is over six foot. I'm going to ask him when I see him exactly what he weighs. No, he won't tell me the truth. I'm going to force him to get on a scale. Well... Until uh, the Filipinos came to town, uh, Varner was the smallest player. What about little Alex? How oh, much yeah, do you think well, he weighs? And he breaks well, them like, uh, like uh, unbelievable. Dalton. Unbelievable. Little Alex is, a, is another uh, young Oriental kid that is playing everything like God, 20 years old. But he was in this tournament, and I'm sure you're going to see some of him. Well, he's not going to make anything on this break. No. And... The two came up short. It doesn't appear that, that uh, Bustamante has an offensive shot. What? He'll cut this one in like it has that. You no, think I he's going to play safe? I wouldn't here? put it past him. Uh, he's and, shooting. Uh, yeah. He's got two balls, both the five and the seven, to use as blockers in, in the event of that he course. misses the one. Of course. But if you want to go to the defense, then he can reposition the cue ball behind the, f the five and the seven, setting the one ball back down table if you want to be a little bit timid there. But uh, not, Bustamante is not really a timid player. No, he? especially when he's losing four to one. You know, he's more apt to do something offensive to get back in the game in this spot. Yeah, he's an attacking player. And uh, he once again showed us that he is an attacking yeah, player. See, now he's much happier than the best safe you could ever play. You know, because now he can get a score. Yeah, this is about as safe as you can possibly get right here. Your opponent in the chair. Yes. Yes. And one of the best offensive players in the world at the table in Francisco Bustamante. And if you will, maybe you can comment about the Filipino, how they, the Filipinos, how they stroke the ball. Well, with their stroke, Un unorthodox, if you will, maybe very not so. Okay, we, we were talking about it earlier. Uh, they all seem to have that real long, uh, the name we came up with is violin stroke. Billy pointed out it's like a violin. You know, and, and he might have something there because I immediately said they play some great music with it. But they do have what I always thought was contrary, that real long bridge and long stroke. I always thought that was tough to control and following through and all that. But they all handle it uh, just like a violin. Effortlessly. And Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Rempe referred to their stroke as a pump stroke. I talked to him back in 1985, I believe it was, when Efren Reyes, Jose Morales, or whatever the name he came yeah, into the yeah, country yeah, under. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Yeah. And he beat everybody in Houston, Texas, except with the exception of Buddy Hall. And Buddy beat him playing 10 ball at the end. But anyways, right. 
I asked Jimmy, uh, uh, I asked Jimmy Rippey how he played, and Jimmy Rippey says, oh, he didn't show me anything special. He had that old pump stroke. Oh, my God. That was really unexpected. Yeah. That's the, uh, the smallness of that pocket, four inches, and it's cut a little bit well, differently than the gold crown pocket. Now, remember earlier, before the match, I said, this guy fires balls in that are like uh, an inch off the rail. And, and then I said, you know what? I've talked so well about this guy that he'll probably play bad and get killed. And that's just what's happening now. I mean, you know, he ordinarily, if you were gambling with him, you could throw that in. You know, but yeah, now that's a he, throw in. Yeah, he wobbled it. And, and uh, now he can be behind uh, a little deeper, five to one. And it looks like that's what's going to happen. Right. And uh, when Shannon's done running out this raccoon, we'll tell you what the score will be, and I'll finish my story. Because this it, is a, a cute, cute ending to the story. This is game number six, Dalton at the table, thanks to the uh, generous Bustamante this time, but he's really not a generous player. Dalton five, Bustamante one. Anyways... The cute story. Jimmy Let's Rippey said to me, I, I didn't see anything special in this game. He has that pump stroke and that, you know. And he happened to have been in Las Vegas at the time, and I was in Las Vegas. So I went down to the pool room to play him. So I went down there, and I, I asked him for a game that I didn't think he would give me, and he gave it to me. You know, he gave me the 7 and 10 playing 10 ball. And I said to myself, well, I think I'll start stalling with this guy because I don't want to show my speed yeah, right away. I'm getting him. the 7 and 10 playing 10 ball. I'm playing Efren Reyes. No one knows who he is. So I start stalling with him. And he, he just ran out and ran out and... I got a shot, and I said, I, if I run out, I'll probably put too much heat on my game. So I'll stall around, play a safety. So I did that, and he kicked it in, and he ran out. And all of a sudden, he kept running out. And I said to myself, when is he going to stop running out? Well, I, well he was never going to stop running out. No. Okay, and that really shocked me. So he ended up beating me for like 30000 with the 7, with, the, with yeah. the 8, the break, and everything, right? So I called up Jimmy Rimpy. I said, Rimpy. I said, you know that guy that you said had a pump stroke? <laughs> I said, he's playing the violin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, he, you know. I'll like, tell you what. That was in the beginning. After they've all invaded us and they all show some super cue ball control, pocketing ability, heart, everything, I don't think Jimmy will call it a pump stroke anymore. I mean, I think uh, that's history. But Shannon <laughs> Dalton... Uh, He's going on his way. I mean, he's just you know, really playing it's flawlessly. It's too bad we didn't match. have the camera on Rempe right now because he has that picture perfect, all the fundamentals stuff down pat. That's why he can't accept that kind of a stroke because it's contrary to what he believes. Wouldn't you say Bustamante's in a little jam here? Well, you know, nine ball, like you said, is, is there's, a, there's a certain amount of luck in the game. I'm not saying that's the reason why Shannon uh, has this lead, because Bustamante has, been, has brought it on by himself, because the last game he had a perfect opportunity to, you know, to win that game, and he shot the, uh, the seven ball, I believe it was, or the six ball, whatever ball it was, too hard pocket would accept it but billy now you've been around the game not quite as long as i have but don't you find that when two players in stroke playing well play a match two great players uh doesn't it wind up some kind of a luck roll here or there that makes the difference doesn't that happen real often well it happens often but i don't think it happens uh as often as one would think but it does happen often enough for us to discuss it. Right. Cleanly hit stroke, ball. And he's getting a perfect angle to go from the five to the six. Now, Shannon has a little bit of a jump after he yeah. shoots, okay? It's okay to jump after you contact the ball. You start developing problems when you jump before contacting the ball. But it's okay to jump after you contact the ball, and that's what he does. If you watch him, the next time he has a half-difficult shot, he'll jump up, but it'll be after he contacts the ball, which is totally acceptable. He's not real happy about this. You know, it's okay, but he would have liked to have been a little straighter, and then you cinch it, and you play the seven. Now he still has to do a little something. He has to bounce out in the middle of the table. And, and that means you're stroking it a hair harder than you'd like. Exactly. And if you hit it, if you don't hit he it cleanly, 
then the pocket will not accept the shot. All right, he's perfect. This is game number six. Excuse me, game number seven. Dalton leads five to one, looking to go on to the hill at six games to one. Bustamante looking very dejected in the chair. Well, uh, I don't think he has lost for sure, so he can buy right back in, right? Yeah, we have, we're playing uh, this tournament with a buyback option, as we've discussed in the past tapes. And if you, if you saw any of those past tapes, you understand what I'm talking about. Every player in the tournament has an option to buy back in the tournament, but only one time. Yeah, and that was all the games. Every one of them had the same rule. You lose a match, you can buy back in before the next round starts. Uh, and that is, like, a little encouraging for Bustamani because he came here all the way from Germany. You know, I mean, uh, it'd be amazing to get eliminated in one race to seven. You really got to uh, take your hat off to Dalton as, for, for as well as he's played this uh -oh. match. And, you know, uh oh, it looks like it's all over. The five ball is the, the only one's ball. The one's the only shot. No, the five, no I the mean, the only to, to pocket. I mean, if he falls real, real good on the five, there's no problem. It goes in that other corner. It goes in this corner. It goes in the other side. The whole secret here is shooting the one and getting control of the cue ball because then you can get to the five difficult as it's lane but well i don't see any problem with any excuse me, I, don't, I don't see any problem with him controlling the cue ball off the one he's just gonna gotta make the one thinly cut it in and it's he's like, not gonna do anything fancy with the cue ball right. he's gonna have a shot on the two which is in front of the upper right hand corner yeah, there he is okay now this is where he has to start thinking what he wants to do with the three where do you want to play the three that will offer you the most natural angle to drop nicely for the five? Once he makes this determination, they don't have to get there with the cue ball. Yeah, he's, he's trying to put his tip where he wants to get. So he wants that angle in the side so he can float forward and maybe shoot the five in this uh, right-hand corner. That's too hard. Yeah, it's a little hard. He's going to have to change hard. his and strategy let's take a look now. At the, and Bustamani gets a little <coughs> ray of hope here because he definitely doesn't have a shootable shot. Well, what I expect Shannon to do from this shot, Danny, I expect, expect him to elevate and mass A off of the three ball, setting the three ball in the direction of the five, and the cue ball back down to the end of the table where he's standing right now, leaving Bustamante, hopefully for Shannon, a long okay. no shot. But you know what he's looking at right now? He's looking at the three ball combination. He is trying to talk himself into the three, into the five, into the nine. He, that's what he's looking at so hard. I could feel it. Look at him. He wants to win this match right now. Well, it's important for any uh, aspiring player or any player out there to understand there's no urgency in this spot right here for Dalton. He leads six to one. He shouldn't do anything foolishly here. Right. He should just play sound, solid nine ball. I Even though he's on the hill, the urgency out there is not for him. It's for Bustamante. So he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to reach for a shot that he doesn't need. He doesn't need that shot. No, you're right. But he sure was looking at it. Well, at any rate, what he's looking at now is cutting the three with a little right-hand English, coming off the rail before the side pocket, and going behind the five and six. That was his last thought. Now the thought is cutting the three towards the five and going one rail, leaving them long or snuckered. Those are the three things he has looked at. Now he's gone back to this. He's going to try to spin the ball with a little oh, right hand English. Yeah, he's spinning in the other and way. And go behind the five and the six. Now the scratch is available if he can get enough spin on it. So it, it, it's possible. So watch out. Oh, he executed it. He executed it. I think he's left the window here, Danny. Yeah, he may have. This he's left the, the window. window. And what? And what? And why do we call this the window, Danny? Because it's the op only opening he has to get to the three. Between the five and, and the six. six. I call it field goal position. You know, it's the same. This shot here is really a difficult shot to execute, particularly when you're behind six yeah, to one. you're on the hill. Oh, he didn't oh, hit, hit that poorly. Too good, but I think he might have got lucky. I think he may have got... No, he didn't. 
he left it. But how do you get to the five right. now? How do you get position on the five? A typical hill game. Now, you know what he may do is draw the ball to the left-hand side rail with a hair right-hand English and spin uh, two rails that way. Or even play for the bank. What's yeah. wrong with that? Yeah, That's right. The yeah, way he I, banks, I like that shot right. much better. That The other yeah. shot you uh, pointed that out makes, seems to be a little haphazard, yeah. that, that shot. It's it, just a little tougher to execute. One way you got to do something with the cue ball. Here you only got to make the three. You just make the three, you're going in that path for a perfect bank. Yeah, this is much better. It's a case of uh, an easy shot with uh, I think the bank. speed of the shot is, is good, too. He's too a little hard. too hard. He's shooting the nine now. He yeah, well, he's forced to shoot the nine now. But the speed of that particular shot uh, is, is really beautiful when you execute it right. Right. But and, and the Filipino players, particularly Efren Reyes, he's such a great finesse player. And he's developed those skills playing bulk line billiards, just finessing and just touching the ball. Do you know what I compare them with? I mean, they cut that ball so thin and kill the cue ball. To me, it's like Michael Jordan staying in the air a long time. They can shoot that cue ball, cut the ball thin, and the cue ball dies. Seven to one. I Seven got, to one. I, I got Bustamante, didn't I? I predicted yes, this could did. happen after I gave him all his... Uh, Accolades. I tell you, he really couldn't play a much better match than what Shannon played. I mean, he played just uh, as about a flawless, a flawless match as you could possibly play. Solid match, very, very solid. solid. And he needed to play that way because of his uh, opponent. You know, you can't you can't give uh, Bustamante any air at all. Well, he just walked over to Nicky uh, Varner, you know, and they just had like a little victory giggle together. Yeah, because they are actually. Uh, home state boys sure let's do an interview because uh you know we we did an interview uh when 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 varner spanked dalton so therefore in all fairness i think that we should give dalton the same courtesy yeah let let dalton tell you how he did it all right anyway i enjoyed it billy you know it, it really is a pleasure working with you danny because you're such an insightful player you bring so much out in in the, in the commentary and i'm certainly sure that the fans are fans and are the people out there that, that, that watch AccuStats tapes there they have to agree with that and once again i uh, really appreciate and enjoy working with you so on behalf of danny de liberto uh, you people out there, thanks a lot for supporting AccuStats. but we're going to get with dalton in just a moment and we'll be, we'll be right back okay thank you We were able to get Shannon up here to, uh, to visit with us. And, and in all fairness, I think that we, sh we he deserves a trip up here to visit with us because we asked him to come up when, when Nick Varner kind of like, if you will, spanked him in the bank pool. So therefore, he came back the very next match against Bustamante and actually performed as well as uh, 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 Varner did in the bank, to bank pool playing, the, playing nine ball against Bustamante. So in all fairness, we should give him a chance to tell us all how he feels about this match against Bustamante. Well, you're exactly right, because as soon as I won, I went straight over to Nick, and I said, see what happens when you make me mad? I said, look what you caused to happen to that guy there. <laughs> but I was just happy. I feel like I played as good as I can possibly play right there. Well, I, I couldn't possibly see uh, anyone playing any better than you. You know, you broke the ball so well. Uh, uh, and the two times that you broke the ball and balls and got hooked was really an injustice. You broke the ball so well, those, those two racks, and the last ball rolling came, came in between the, uh, the one ball or the ball you were supposed to be shooting and the cue ball. It must have been kind of frustrating. Well, sure it is. When you break the balls, you already see two go in the pocket, and everything's sitting there just perfect. And all of a sudden, the last ball comes around and just slides right into place, and nothing you can do about that. Nothing you can do about that. But let me ask you this question, because I'm kind of curious to hear what you have to say about this. When that happens to you, how do you respond to it? What are you thinking about, and how do you respond to it, and how long do you think about it? Well, you um, about the only thing you can do then is not get mad, not get frustrated, not let it get you upset. Just try to push out to a shot that maybe you think you can outmove the guy to anyway. If it's landing the position, you can. And uh, if you can't, I guess, you know, sometimes you just got to take a flyer at it or do what you can do. But then it's, but the only thing, you better not keep it in your head. You have to get it away out of your mind as soon as possible. If not, it will frustrate you. So, therefore, if you can keep it together mentally, then you're able to defeat players like Bustamante and Reyes and Archer and players of that caliber. And... Uh, 
if you can't keep it together mentally and you don't play well under adverse conditions, then you have no chance of defeating those players. Correct. The only thing you can do against guys like that, they've earned their titles. They've earned the fear that they cause when they play people. You just have to put that behind you, and the only thing you can do is when you get an opportunity, try to take advantage of it. And if you get opportunities and take advantage of them, hopefully you might win. So, therefore, when you watch a young player get a bad role, and then he responds by either throwing his hands up in the air or saying something, it always happens to me, why doesn't it happen to the next person? You know that man's not really prepared to play. Well, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that because everybody's done it. I mean, if it just keeps happening and keeps happening and keeps happening, I mean, you know, you can play some matches and play perfect, and th that just take you out of the match. You know, if say it happens four or five times in a row, and you know it can happen, then, you know, it's, it's hard not to get a little frustrated, or it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you seem to have handled it quite well, and quite well you did, beating Francisco Bustamante, the number one player, by the way, the number one player in the world, seven to one. And... Uh, that's a pretty convincing, uh, pretty convincing meeting. I got some opportunities and took advantage of them. I feel fortunate to get them, but I took advantage of them and it let me make it through at this time. Well, I mentioned to Danny in the, in the telecast that you are, without a doubt, the strongest young player in the world today. And also, you have the most experience of any of the young players on the tour today. And uh, my, it just seems to me that you're not a young player because you've been around so long, like, like Danny mentioned. You've been around, you, you've been around as long as... Uh, Almost as, as long as I am. <laughs> now, Billy, now, Billy, don't tell, don't tell no fibs on us now. But I was fortunate to get out and get an early start. My dad brought me out, and he got me going to some tournaments and stuff like that. And then I just I got started at a young, early age and loved it, and here we are. Well, it's certainly been a pleasure watching you play throughout the years and watching you develop into the fine, fine player that you are today. And, uh, and whenever you're playing, I try to, like, you know, try to go around that table to watch you perform because I've, I always really do. I always learn something watching you perform. I mean, you do some of the most, sometimes the most beautiful stuff and sometimes the most crazy. Yeah, craziest stuff. But, but after you do it, I say, he like a fox. Could be, I guess. I don't know. Just try to be, play my own style of game. I never tried to copy nobody else's game. And sometimes I get a wild hair and might do a little something crazy, but. I guess all in all, it's turned out pretty good. I'm happy. Well, I'm happy for you. you. So once again, congratulations in this great, great match here with Francisco Bustamante, and good luck to you for the rest of the Thank tournament. Thank you very much, Billy. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot for supporting Stats. Give Pat a call, 1-800-828-0397.